When you first start in Inkscape, creating clouds or mists can be very daunting and difficult to wrap your head around. But fear not, today I'm going to show you how. Hello my friends, welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. Rob here from Button Press Graphics and today I'm going to show you how to create mist or lighting effects that you wouldn't normally know how to do. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now as you can see on screen, I have created this little image. It is the Grim Reaper with a scythe and I've got a blue glow coming from behind him. Now this didn't take me that long to do but it does look a little bit flat. Now if I go into this as you can see we have the silhouette in front and then we have these little polygons here that are behind it. I've just laid a couple of them up on top and that mixed with the gradient that I've got in the background here, it gives a really cool effect. But I want to add some mist, some mist behind the silhouette and some mist in front to give it that extra dynamic feel. So in order to do this, it is very, very simple. A lot more simple than you might think, just by using a filter. So let's get started. Let's create the shape that we want to put in front of this silhouette. Now for this, I am just going to simply make sure that I have snapping turned on using my squares and rectangles tool so I can clip just like this onto the corner of the canvas. And I'm just going to clip and drag all the way down to the bottom. Next, I'm going to change this to a path by going path object to path now you don't really need to do that step but it's just a force of habit for me at the moment and now i'm just going to go to the circles and ellipses tool and i want to create a big oval in the middle of this shape so i'm going to just click and drag and what i am paying particular attention to is this area here on the bottom of the rectangle i want to try and get a curve coming down here and then going up at the other side so i can do this by using my select tool on this circle and then reshaping it until i get the shape that i want at the bottom here Now that looks like a good curve to me. So now that I have got the curve that I want, I'm going to select both of them. And then I'm going to open my Align and Distribute menu. You can find that right here with this little icon. The reason I've done this is to line it up and make it completely symmetrical. So with last selected, selected from the drop down, I'm just going to hit this button right here that says center on the vertical axis and just like that we now have it symmetrical and now with them both selected i am going to go to path and difference and what you're left with is this shape here now what i want to also do is i want to duplicate this and make it more severe but have this layered behind this silhouette so in order to do that i can just control and d or i can right click and select duplicate now i'm just going to simply drag this one up until i get it into a position that i'm happy with something around there and then i'm just going to select this button which says lower selection one step and I'm going to keep pressing it until you see it do that and drop behind the silhouette. Now for the magic. Now we have the shapes. All we have to do is select the one we want to edit, which I'm going to select this one right here. 
and then we're going to go to our filters. Now if you're running the 1.4 beta of Inkscape, you will be able to just select this option here, the filter gallery. But we are going to be using the watercolor filter. So if you don't have the 1.4 beta and you are still using 1.3, you can find it in the textures and then scroll all the way down to watercolor. Now for this, I'm going to open the filters gallery. I'm going to select all effects. And then I'm just going to go to this search bar and start typing in watercolor. And there it is. I'm going to select it, click apply. And all of a sudden you get something that looks like this. Now the good thing when it comes to this watercolor filter effect is you can still edit it in any way that you want. So do you want to blur it a little bit more? You can do so by going to your fill and stroke menu. Now if you haven't got your fill and stroke menu open, you can find it right here with the fill and stroke button. If you're using a previous version and not the 1.4 beta, you will find these icons on the top here, just underneath the file bar. Once you have it open, come down to where it says blur and opacity at the very bottom and then play around with the blur and the opacity. And as you can see, it has a direct impact on exactly what you've done with the filter you can increase the opacity and get it to be more distinct or you can lower it as well to make it more of a very subtle change you can also add your gradients and you can change the color like you normally would so let's say i want a gradient at the moment we have our start point and our end point. The start point has got full opacity, but the end point has got zero opacity, signified by this alpha bar here. So now if I click this node and I drag it to the bottom, and I click this end node and drag it up, we can now adjust these on the bar and we can get the exact effect that we want. Not only that, but you can change the color too. So if we came here and we changed it to a light blue, now, as you can see, it gives a really cool effect. This can be shown even more when I use the back shape that we created earlier. I do exactly the same filters, use my filter gallery or come down to textures and watercolor. And now we have something that looks a whole lot more dynamic. Now for this one, I'm just going to lower it down a little. I'm going to lower the opacity as well. And I'm going to add the same one again, a gradient. But this time I'm going to use a radial gradient. And we're going to do it in exactly the same way. Edit where the start nodes and the end nodes are. just like that and then you can add or take away with the opacity and of course you can change the color so let's make this one a whole lot darker and maybe if we make this a light shade of i don't know purple so we just get that slight purple hue to it as you can see if i deselect everything we have now made this silhouette look a whole lot more dynamic. So there you have it, my friends. That's how you can add the mist effect to your designs in Inkscape. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel enabling me to make much better content in the future. 
Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.